All right, going to continue the OS dev today. Going to try to replace int 16, enter up 16H and hex for the keyboard to get keys. I'm going to try to replace that initially here with uh, polling the keyboard data port. Uh, later on, I want to make an interrupt descriptor table after we switch to 32 bit mode. That'll be after doing the global descriptor table, of course. And then I'll, you know, put in the IRQ1 or interrupt service routine 1, however that is. Um, a, a better way of getting, you know, keyboard scan codes and, and characters. But we're going to pull the data port today. So I'm going to show that. This little uh, test file I did. I put in a little bit, well, a little lookup table just to help things along. When you get the scan codes from the keyboard, I think there's three different sets of scan codes. And I don't know what the common ones are that QEMU uses. I guess it's set two or three. I don't know. But anyway, um, the keys on the keyboard are the normal whatever, 104 key, I guess, might be the standard keyboard. The scan codes that you hit a key with that are sent back um, are kind of laid out like this, kind of how the rows on your keyboard look, you know, the num row and then the character rows here. So I just kind of took uh, basically the scan code list kind of online and put, you know, the first set of values here. So if you type in, you know, a 1 on the keyboard, the scan code that's sent back is going to be... I think it's zero base. So the scan code sent back is two. It's not one. You know, if you send back a J, it's like, you know, whatever this number in the list is kind of offset from zero. So I set up a little thing for like a lookup table so we can offset and get that value for the ASCII code later in this. But um, the shifts are laid out a little bit differently. I made another little line for if you press the shift key and the number key zero through nine, then this is kind of how they're laid out. So, you know, shift zero is right paren, shift one is an exclamation, shift two is an at sign, so on and so forth. So that's just how I did it for this. I, I didn't include every character. You know, there's no question mark. There's no tilde. There's, you know, some of the keys aren't here, but this was the easiest thing I could do on short notice. So I have a, something for the current key, the previous key that was pressed, and if you're shifting just with the left shift right now, haven't done right shift key, haven't done control key, haven't done anything, you know. Um, set in the current key, which when we start, that's not going to be set. That's fine. So we're reading from the keyboard data port. We're getting a scan code from the data port, which is port 60 in hex. We read that into AL. It's one byte. Um, if the data port is full, the output buffer, it's, you're going to have a scan code in here. So let me show the uh, OS, OS dev wiki page here. The PS2 controller, Intel 8042 originally, I guess. Um, we have ports here, I.O. ports, keyboard port 60 in hex is the data port. You can read or write data to it. Port 64 is the status register or, you know, command register if you write to it. But if you read, I'm not doing this in QEMU because it was a weird, it was a little buggy, but uh, normally for polling data, just waiting in a loop to see if there's data to be read, you can wait and read a byte in from port 64 and check if the first bit, the zero bit is set. If so, the output buffer is full and there you can read a scan code from port 60. So you can wait, read in if it's zero, keep reading until it's full and then read from 60. So, but QEMU is a little buggy with that. You can do that in box and it works, but QEMU was being weird and laggy. So I didn't do that. Um, QEMU, you can just read straight from 60 if there's something to be read. As I understand it right now, I, I might change that in a bit. But anyway, I'm just reading from port 60 whether there's actually data there or not. So I don't have a great implementation, but oh well. <laughs> I'm just reading there and I'm setting that. I'm checking if what we read was the previous value read. So I, I don't have logic for repeating. So this is not, you know, a great example, but still. So if we press like a J and then we press a K, K will be different. So it'll go on. Um, so I'm, I'm basically, I'm getting the scan code that we read. The scan code for left shift is 2A. If you press it down, if you release it, it's AA. So checking the shift key here. Uh, when scan codes are sent, there's what's known as make or break codes, which is kind of funny, but I guess that's the proper name for it. So a, a make code is sort of when you press the key down. A break code is when you release a key. And the way you test a break code in general is if, uh, well, you can test 80 with the test mnemonic. So if that bit's set, if the, if bit seven is set, uh, which is, you know, 128, or you can test for 80 and hex, same thing. If bit seven is set, you release the key, the break code. I'm not counting those. I'm not going to send that to the screen. So I'm just skipping over that. 
Um, otherwise, the, the specific break code for left shift here, I'm, I'm handling it. So if shift is pressed, if we get a scan code, we press the left shift key down. The scan code will be 2A, which is jumping down here. I'm just, I have a you know variable place in memory called left shift. I'm moving a one to there. If we have the release, the break code for it, I'm just putting a zero in there. And then I'm going on and getting whatever key they press shift with. So if they did shift A, we're reading in the make code for shift. We're gonna move a one, we're gonna go move that back in. Maybe we have an A this time. A will be different, we'll move on. Okay, if it's a break code, if you release the shift key or release A or whatever, I'm moving on. I'm not gonna print that to the screen. If that makes sense, that's all this is doing. So to get the actual key that we got, if it was not a shift key, um, I'm getting what we have right here. So I'm moving the lookup table, which is up here. So scan code to ASCII is the name of this. So I'm moving that into BX. Um, I assume that DS, the data segment was set when you load the boot sector and um, I was correct, it is set correctly to zero or seven C zero zero, whatever it is. But I'm using um, a different instruction here that I learned about called, I think it's translate byte. So X slat B. What this does is offset uh, DSBX for a sort of lookup table, and then it takes the value in AL and kind of offsets within to that to get a value that it then puts into AL. So if we set up something like an array here, this is an array of bytes. These are all, you know, one byte ASCII characters generally, except for the zeros. We're basically moving that into BS or, or into BX offset from DS. Um, the value in AL is the scan code that we read. So if we press a one on the keyboard, the scan code that we'll read in is a two technically. So we're saying we're offsetting from this area in memory, offset two, that'll be this one that we pressed. And I'm gonna put that one, that character into AL. That is what this, this does here. So DSBX is a lookup table. Um, the result of X slat B, AL will be DSBX plus AL. Or if you wanna think of it as an array, it's kind of AL index in the array. So AL equals table, you know, index AL. Okay, if that makes sense, hopefully it does. All right, and after that, I'm checking if the shift key is pressed. If it's not, we're just printing out whatever we hit. So I print character down here with n 10. Uh, if we did press the shift key, maybe we want like a, a capital letter or something. And I'm checking down here. If we press the shift key with the num row, so it's a valid number, um, converting the ASCII number to an integer value. So if we pressed a one on the keyboard at this point, we've translated the scan code to a character one. So I'm checking that. And then, I mean, this isn't the most efficient. I'm translating that character back into an integer. So we'd have an integer one. And then I'm going into the number of shifts line here. So if we did shift to one, it would be an exclamation. So I'm offsetting one from this point. Again, with the X slat B instruction or mnemonic. So AL at this point, if we did shift one for the exclamation, AL would be the exclamation mark. And then I'm printing that out. Okay, if we did shift on a letter, not a number, I'm going down here to check alpha. Did they enter in a valid character to begin with? So say we did shift A, that would be fine. Um, translating to uppercase, so shift key, shift A would be an uppercase or capital A. So if you subtract 20 in hex, since the lowercase letters are above the uppercase letters and the ASCII you know, character set. They're above them by 32 or 20 in hex. We can subtract that to convert lowercase to uppercase. And we'll print that out. And that is uh, the whole example here. So hopefully that made a little lick of sense. It might not have, but hopefully it did. So just run FASM on it and make sure it assembles so I'm not lying to you. And we'll check it. We'll do HDA for variety. All right. So this gives me a blank screen and I can type in the letters or numbers. Um, I am constantly reading from the data port 60. So if you type too fast, it seems to miss, although I might make mistakes, but I'll just show you, you can type in, you know, one, type in a two, three. It counts everything here. Um, I think I did up to there. Oh, I did a backslash, but I didn't do beyond the backslash or maybe I did, I did a tick there, okay. But there's also, you know, you can type normal text here, but it seems to skip some things, you know, if you type too fast. So that's another issue with this basic example. But I did a period. I did not do question mark, as you saw, so that's still a backslash. But you can do capital letters or cap TL, capital. There we go. You can do dots, commas, spaces, 
tab does not work because I didn't put that in. But you can type, you know, random garbage. Random. Oh, backspace doesn't work. Random garbage. But I can't type anyway. So, yeah, and it skips some stuff. But hopefully this will be a decent enough implementation to just send back one letter at a time to replace int 16. And if it doesn't and it's too buggy, then I'll fix it till it does work for that, and then we'll move on. But I'm going to try to put that in to the, you know, the OS, replace int 16, see if it works. So let's see. I'll go to the build folder. Actually, we'll go out. Let's see where all we are using it. So recursively, int 16h in the main folder. So calculator, yeah, I get keys for that. Editor and kernel. So only three files, so that's not too bad. So what do I have here? I include disk print screen type conversion. So I'm not sure if this would go in any of these. It wouldn't be disk. It would not be print, technically. I'm going to make a new folder. Let's just make a new one. Include, we'll call it keyboard. Um, except don't put that bracket there. And then we'll go to that. Include keyboard. Some good name. Naming is like the second hardest problem, as everyone knows. And computer science and programming. Get character from keyboard. Or get key. Maybe get key. Get keystroke. Let's do that. No. I'll call it get key until I figure out a better name. Because what, what I'm ultimately going to return is the ASCII character. But I'm going to call it get key right now. All right, so get key dot inc. Let's do, uh, I'll put this thing in here. Let's go back. Go to tests. So it was this one. All right. Let's just copy everything and we'll just put it there. All right. Let's call this get key when we ultimately call it. I'll call it that. Yeah, logic can be start. I don't want to do that stuff. Actually, we'll jump the next scan code. Um. Let me do this. Return an ASCII character translated from a scan code from PS2 controller data port 60x. Yes. So I'm unsure how I'm going to handle that with shift key. I guess if shift is pressed, we'll get the next one. Um, and also there might be data remaining on the data port that we might have to clean up or mess with. So this might be a bit bad trying to put it in to begin with, but that's okay. We'll try it. We'll try and fix it up. So the only thing I'm going to do is instead of printing, um, oh, I also need to set up the the stack and everything. What all am I messing with? AX, but that's always messed with. So BX, DS. DS I have to change, but I think I change when I call now. Not absolutely sure, but we are messing with DS and BX, so I guess I can push those. Anything else? I think that's it. I won't need this stuff. Push DX, push BX, okay. So when we print, I'm gonna change that in a second, but ultimately we'll be returning. Let's pop BX, pop DS. Um, VP into SP and pop VP. Although I'm not really going to be sending any arguments on the stack, so I probably don't really need to do this, but I'm just putting it there anyway, so because I'm used to doing that. <laughs> but we won't have any arguments we access, so that should all be fine. I'm really just saving and restoring DS and BX. Um, I guess we'll have the return be an AL. Yeah, because that's where we're printing from anyway. So I'll put that here. Uh, I'll put outputs or return or whatever. I'll put output, uh, character, and AL. Okay. Okay, yeah, that'll work. So down here, we're not going to print it out. 
Character should be an AL. Character should be a an AL at this point. Okay, so we'll do that. So yeah, if they pressed shift, it's going to go back up here. It's going to get the next key. And then when it goes to print, we'll return. The only issue is that we're not setting shift off. So I'm just gonna do that just in case down here. Reset shift status, just in case. I'll just move a zero into there. Before, before we return, gratuitous amounts of white space, as always. Um, I will have to add in code, you know, for question mark and other characters, like uh, the plus sign I'm not handling as well. Other things, tilde. But other than special shifted characters, I think we'll be okay. We'll see how this fares and uh, if it just breaks immediately. Uh, okay. So kernel, let's go to the bottom. I'll just put it down here. It'll be keyboard this time. Exciting, another key. So in 16, we have what, one, two places? That's not too bad. And this is right when we get the prompt, okay. Instead of doing this, yeah, we're not sending anything on the stack, which should be okay. I'll just call get key. So get scan code from port 60 into AL. Well, get ASCII character. From scan code from port 60 into AL. I don't think that's gonna do the enter key. I don't think that would do the enter key. Don't believe so. I think I'm, no, I'm returning like a zero for that. I'll have to put something in. So what, what is the enter key originally? I don't remember. I gotta look it up. <laughs> Sorry about that. Do I have a, I do have a scan code page. Stanislav, thank you. Save this. Um, enter was 1C0D. So I forget if I did these two or these two. I think it was these two. Because a one was two. Yeah, and a two is three. Okay, so it's the first two. So enter is 1C. So that is, or no, it's 16 plus 12, right? So that's 28. So the 28th character here. Oh, geez. Actually, what's <laughs> what's 1B? Let's look for that. That would be faster. 1B is the right bracket, so next to the right bracket, which is here. Okay. So let's send back, I guess, a 0D, because that's what we're currently doing. I'll send back a 0DH. That'll be the enter key. I'm also checking for 8, which is backspace. What is backspace? Oh, backspace is 0E. Okay, so that's 14. 0D is equal. So right after equal, right after equal is backspace. So that's up here. So this, I'm gonna send back an eight, because in my kernel, I'm checking eight for backspace. Anything else I have to worry about? We're not doing anything there. That's the only other thing. I'm just getting a keystroke in the graphics test where we draw a square. So I'm not even worried about that. So we really only use one place in the kernel. So this will be good to test. I'll test it, probably won't work. Oh, it built, that's not a good sign. <laughs> It's never a good sign. So what happens if I press one? Okay, I get a one. What happens? So an A. So shift A. Oh. It's working. It's oh no, it only shift only works for one character. So if we want all caps, we have to press shift repeatedly for every time we do it. So that's kind of annoying. So <laughs> shift H, shift A, shift T, shift S. So that's annoying. If we don't enter in anything, it somehow did that. Okay, so, but can we enter DIR? Well, the W didn't work. 
We have to we have to type a little slow. You can't type too fast again. Well, look at that. She works. Some of these characters aren't valid for tokens, so it's kind of in an infinite loop right now, and it's broken. I should work on that. I should probably work on that eventually, but that does work. Which is amazing. That is probably one of the easiest changes I've done so far. So that's really nice. So directory works. Print reg works. Um, editor. Nope. Editor. Sorry. Editor. That does not work. Which is interesting. I don't know why it did that. What just happened? Directory. E-D-I-T-O-R. So why is it doing that, I wonder? Okay, can I run another program? No. Now it could be that we have stuff already in the buffer for the keyboard and it's reading them because we're going to get keys and everything in the editor. Maybe that's an issue, uh, but it works in the kernel so far. So I'm going to change it in the other places as well. <laughs> And hope that it works out. It probably won't, but I'll hope that it works. You know, I'll hope that it works. So in 16, that's the only place. Okay. Let's just call it get key. Character in AL. Ultimately. And we'll check for that. Oh, 1B is escape. Did not handle that. Escape is one. Oh, zero, one. Oh, okay. I'm sending back. I'm checking for a 1B for that. So that would be this. I'll send back a 1B for right now. That'll be the escape key. We'll save that. Anything else? I don't think so. Hopefully not. So that's the calculator. Okay, so we need included files here as well. Include it in there. All right. It's easy. We're still good so far. Uh, DI does it. Oh, can't do R. There we go. Clear the screen. Okay. C A L. So I have to type slower, which is not great. Calculator gave me a syntax error. Well, that's great. But can I do stuff from then on? Okay, five is five. 10. Okay, I don't get a plus sign back, so I have to put in a plus sign if I want to do that. <laughs> uh, 10 minus 2 should be 8, so that should be valid. Um, I have times. That should be 10. Or I can do 4 times 2. That should be 8. Uh, I have division, so 10 divided by 2 should be 5. Okay. Escape. Escape works, although it puts an arrow there. So let's return that. Um, plus sign would be if we repress shift and we're at equals. So the ASCII, uh, where's the equals here? This is below uppercase letters and it is above numbers. So that's where the logic has to be. So if they press shift and we're above numbers, I'm going to check alpha, check alpha goes to the lowercase. I guess it would be less than the lowercase. The so lowercase all the way up here. So it would be less than, less than a, yeah. All right. So jump less than, we'll, we'll call this check, I don't know, special characters or something, other. Let's call it other. Check other characters. So we'll do that. Um, Check other characters. Okay, I'll compare AL to equals. If so, I want to move equals into AL. If not, then it's invalid. So we'll just go to something else. Is there, there's not an easy way to do like switch statement type deal. I don't think a jump table would be right. But a way to do like you know, if it equals this, then I guess that's what I did with lookup tables. Because I'm going to have, if it equals that, you know, go somewhere. If it equals a single quote, then I'm going to be 
putting in a double quote. If, if I put in a slash, I want to put in a question mark, you know. Now I'm going to have to move that into AL, but there's not an easy way to do that, is there? So I don't want to have like these jump things all over. It's going to be very ugly, stupid code. So there's a C move, compare and move operand, but I'd have to move the value that I want into like, I'd have to move like this, and then C move equal AXBX, and then that would make AL equal to a question mark, but I'd have to move this in before every one of these. I mean, I can do that. It's just kind of annoying, you know? But I guess that might be the way to go. I, I guess so. I'll just do that for now. Until I find a better implementation, we'll do that for now. I can't use 8-bit registers in CMove. That's why I'm using 16-bit registers. So I'm going to move a plus sign into here. I mean, it'll just move into the lower half anyway. So BL will be equal to that. That's fine. And then BH should be zeroed out because it's only one byte value. But we'll do this. CMove equal AX BX. So AL equals plus. Yeah, L equals question mark. We'll do these two for now. We can do other ones later, <laughs> I guess. Put that as a to-do. Um, get next key if invalid. I don't know. Right now I'm just going on. We'll return. So we'll try that out. All right, that works. So we should be able to do question marks now. Shift in that. Um, Shift in equals is a plus. Shift in backslash is not. I probably did forward slash. No, that's backslash. Interesting. Am I not returning that? Up here? No, I'm doing backslash. Or forward, sorry, that is forward slash. Backslash is the other one. That's forward slash. That's forward slash. Interesting. Uh, if I'll put that. If true, you know, that's what compare move equal does. It takes the equal. I mean, you can also do, you know, not equal. You can do overflow. Uh, you can check the sign flag. You can check the carry flag. Like not carry. I'm just using equal for this. Be uh, simple. All right. I'm going to figure out why I'm not getting a question mark and I'll be back when I figure that out. Okay. I changed some things, but I'll, I'll try to explain because I'll, you know, it, it, I'm stupid. If, if you didn't know, I, I mean, I do these at night after work, so my brain's tired from programming for work. Um, sometimes I have alcohol. Today I have water, but I'm not smart. That's why amateur is in the title of these, because I'm not a professional. I'm not smart. So the forward slash is below numeric zero. I was trying to compare for the question mark, <laughs> which is what I want to convert the forward slash to if the user presses shift. So the question mark is not the one I want to check for. I want to check if they entered forward slash, which is below numeric zero. I had a, a bad wild goose chase for a bit, so I'm glad I, I'm glad I cut that out of the video. But anyway, so the slash down here, the check other characters is only going to be hit if it's less than zero. So I changed this. This was print character, right? So I changed that to check other characters. Now I also changed. Um, this greater than for the Z, although that doesn't really matter for what we're doing, but there might be characters up there we want to check. So I changed that here to check other, um, but below zero, I changed that to check other because that's where the slash is. And I'm a big stupid doo-doo head, but yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Also, I deleted pot BP down here. So pot BP, make sure that's there because for some reason it wasn't. Okay. And in the kernel, I was messing with stuff, but uh, this should be good now. I had also deleted this enter key, so I was getting errors, and I was like, why is that not working? Because I deleted that code somewhere. But I think everything's back to normal now. So I can put in uh, an equal sign, shift equals a plus, slash, shift slash, bam, it's a question mark. You know, now ain't that just grand question mark. So, but anyway. Okay, so let's see if the calculator bites the dust or not. I had moved that over and made these not work. 
just for debugging. So let's see if calculator works. Probably doesn't. But you know, we'll we'll try it out. Oh, again, starts with a syntax error. Does it work by getting the key? Gets the five, of course. Gets the ten. It works with the plus now. Ten plus two should be twelve, which will be C. Okay, so this seems to work. So ten, we'll do one hundred, I guess nine. That's not gonna work. Minus two. That's a thousand and seven. That well, that might be correct, actually, because it's within sixteen bit limit of six five five three five. So I wanted to do like ten plus two, plus nine plus parentheses five or four minus one in print in print. So that would, that's not 18, that's 16 plus eight, which is 24. So 12 plus nine is 21 plus three is 24. Okay, so we're good there. And the escape key works. Again, you have to press shift each and every time you do the parentheses right now because I'm not keeping the shift status. Um, I should, I just don't know if I go back into it and release shift, if that'll have the break code. I don't think that'll work. I guess I could try it, but I don't think that'll work right now. So anyway, that gets rid of for the moment, int 16 in the calculator and the kernel. So, but uh, yeah, we got rid of int 16 here. Do that, make sure, yep. All right, um, 16h, nope, it's 16h in the file, it's not, okay. We should see that deleted, right, from these. So it's only in the editor and Oh yeah, it is in, it is in the, the thing. The graphics test in the kernel, let's erase it from there as well. Other than that, it's just in the editor. Oh, 16H, there we go, keystroke. We don't have to move AH0 anymore. We'll just call get key, and we won't really care what goes on. So get keystroke character in AL. Okay, Let's just make sure that works. So graphics test, right? We have a square, press any key. Um, it does not load correctly, but it does go back and then it does not load correctly. So that's, hmm, well, that's not great. <laughs> Instead of worrying about this right now, cause we're gonna change, you know, graphics test stuff later. That's fine. Um, I can just be a lame -o and just reset the whole thing. I'm just gonna reset the whole thing. We could reset QEMU or, well I have reboot, don't I? Can I just jump to reboot? Uh, OT, yeah. We'll just do that. We'll jump to the reset vector. After we get any key back. Jump to reset vector, reset everything. To do temp fix. Okay. <laughs> that way I don't have to do this other stuff. Okay. So it doesn't even matter if stuff's gonna mess up after this. We press anything and it reloads, so we're fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that is not a good way to do things, but you know what? We're we're going fast and loose here, so that's alright. The only place left is the editor. So this might be bad, but let's try to replace it in the editor. Try to replace it in the editor. We'll see how well it goes. Probably bad. Probably horribly wrong. All right, so 16H here, we get a key. Is this at the top? Let's see, yep. Yeah. All right. Um. I know I keep putting different comments every time. It's to keep you on your toes and me because I won't know what I mean later. That's the best part. <laughs> character returned in AL. Character, so what is create new? C, oh, that should still be all right. No, that, that'll work, that'll work. Um, so let's see if that works. Just the first part. So we'll run it. Again, we have that there, editor. I think it's because there's still stuff, there's still stuff left in the keyboard buffer 
And I'm not clearing out the buffer, I don't think. So that might be the issue. We should be printing this though. We should be waiting to get a key. But what this does, if there's already a key, then it gets, you know, whatever's on the buffer. So if there's something there, it reads it in. If there's nothing there, it'll wait, right? Until something is in the keyboard buffer to be read. But I'm guessing there's still stuff remaining in the keyboard buffer. So it's reading that in and going on and just failing to load everything and just messing up, which is awesome. It's always great. Well, if we go in, so we, if we do press a shift key, it goes back. I mean, it goes back until we don't get a shift key and then we go on, convert it. Okay, so we're resetting. Let's do it right here. Clear out any remaining data in keyboard, keyboard, keyboard buffer. Bad attempt at doing this. So we'll have a loop. And right now I'll just say jump loop. So the status port is 64. So if we read in uh, port 64 instead of port 60, this is the 8042 or PS2 controller, keyboard controller, whatever. I guess it's PS2. That's what the OS dev wiki said. So I'm just going to put PS2 controller status register. We're going to read that in. We need to test if the first bit, bit zero, uh, we need to test if that is set so we can we can use test or and so I think test does an and between the very between the, the operands, but it doesn't change them. So if we test it with one, it might need AX actually. It shouldn't matter though. Um, this will test the first bit, I believe. Maybe we need to do zero. I forget how test works, even though I use it in this file even. I use it right there. Testing of bit seven is set. So it performs an and. So if we and with one. It should be able to test if the first bit is set. Check if first bit is set. And um, the first bit being zero indexed, I mean bit zero, but so I don't confuse myself later. Bit zero, check if bit zero is set. Um, if it is, we still have data to be read, right? Isn't that how this works? One is full. Okay, so if it's zero, we'll go on. If it's still there, we're going to read the data. And uh, we'll loop again. So I'm going to do, we'll do done. All right. You know what we could do instead? There's a BT uh, mnemonic here, which is bit test. So I think if we bit test zero, it'll be the zeroth bit. It copies it to the carry flag. So if the carry flag is set, bit zero is set. So if it's not set, we can jump not carry and we're good at zero. There's no more data, but if it is set, bit zero will be one carry will be set. So we're going to read in, uh, the data at 60. We do bit is set, still have data read in next byte. Okay. And then we'll jump again. So we're just going to loop and see if there's still data there. If there is, we're going to read it in and we're going to keep checking until there's no more data. Then we're going to go on. Uh, that might break everything, you know, because this is invalid, of course, because loop is a reserved word. Um, I need a dot. And there we go. That did assemble. So does it still return keys? Okay. Well, uh, no, it doesn't. It returns nada for everything. So can't even put a D. It doesn't do anything. So that's great. So don't do what I did, apparently, because it doesn't work. Because we replaced AL, of course. Of course. Yep, well, that's what I get for doing that. So let's do that. <laughs> let's push it, and then we'll pop it. So save and restore AX. Why do I do this at night when my brain is tired and I don't get anything right? I don't know. It makes it more fun. It makes it fun for the whole family. There we go. That still seems to work. Okay. Let's see if we have an issue here. It still says syntax error. That is interesting. I don't like that it says that. Uh, but it does work, so. Can I spell? I can't. And that goes there. So that, I mean, that's not... 
I don't like that it does that. Well, that's fine for now. We'll leave it there. Let's test that everything isn't completely broken. Oh, I'm just getting a key. Oh, well, yeah, that should be fine. Let's just get rid of in the in the git key since we're not really doing this stuff. I'm just gonna get rid of those. <laughs> That's why I didn't clear screen at least. We're just pushing the registers. Not messing with the stack, don't worry about it. See, like I get a I get a blank line and syntax error and I don't do anything. Like that shouldn't happen, really. And uh editor like going there immediately and just things being blank, that shouldn't happen either. So I'm gonna see what that might be and I'll you know, we'll see in a second when I figure that out, if I figure it out. Okay, so in the git key include file here, um, I can't get this stuff to work. I'm just double checking. I didn't change anything uh, while I was gone, right? Um, the only thing I added was this in case we press like the alt key on startup or anything. Um, the scan code to ASCII lookup table here is 57 bytes. You know, all these bytes together at the end here for the space at the end is 57 or 39 in hex. So if we, I'm just checking if it's greater than that, then I read the next thing until it's different. So that's all I added. Um, I forget if I had this at the end of the last part or not, but this doesn't work. It doesn't do anything in QEMU. So I'm going to get rid of it. Can't really clear out the buffer anyway. I just, unless I make an interrupt vector table like thing or an interrupt descriptor table and handle it correctly, or at least a lot better than I am now, then stuff's just going to be jank, which is very unfortunate, but... Um, that's all right. So that's all right in the kernel. Um, the, the only unfortunate part is that we have weird stuff happens when we start up the calculator and then that happens. And we go to the editor. It doesn't show anything. So I think the editor is trying to load a file to start off with. So let me just um, change that right quick. So when we load up the editor and get rid of those lines, keep git key. So if it's not create new, if we have like an invalid character from git key, it won't be create new, it won't be load current. So it'll go to create new anyway. It'll go down, it'll display, you know, choose the file type. It'll go down to load existing file because we didn't put in a valid key here from git key. And then this stuff also probably won't be valid. So actually I'll just delete that. Um, so if there's not a valid key that was input into AL, these won't be true. It goes to load existing file by default. And then it goes down and prints the file table, which wasn't working for some reason. But I'm going to put a um, little logic here. We'll say key loop. If it's neither of these, I'm just going to jump back to key loop. So we'll go until it's valid. Um, unfortunately, I have to add, you know, stupid code like this until I make a proper get key function and I do things right probably with you know interrupt descriptor table or okay so maybe that would clear up at least the editor thing but yeah I'm gonna have to handle invalid key presses return from get key in everything that uses it so in everything that returns from get key I'll have to handle invalid characters at the moment until I make it better so uh, which might not be for a while if you're familiar with this channel but let's go back to editor So now it goes to here, it doesn't go on. We can load an existing file that does not load that correctly. Now, why is that? Um, that is load existing file. That calls print file table. So let's look at that. Uh, print file table. I would guess because we're not setting DX for the drive number. So let's do that first. I don't know if we need DX anywhere, but we'll move that into there. Or well, DL rather. So that is um, the editor drive num is what we're looking at, right? I think. We'll just move that in before we call it and see if that fixes it or it doesn't. It might not. It would help if I spelled it correctly and that didn't matter. Okay. What was that? Editor goes to here, press an L. It keeps the L when it reads it in. So it's reading in, I guess, get key to load the file name, or it's doing uh, AH0 in 16, 
It takes in an L to begin with, as well as some other line of garbage here. It put in a full line and went back. That's not good. We'll have to mess with it a bit more in the editor. Uh, unfortunately. So where are we doing it? 16s between those two. Load file error. And 16h. Enter. Okay. So input file name. That would be where it's failing right now. Because we're doing it right here, get keystroke, that's why. And we're storing it to the file name variable. Okay. So be call get key. Um, AL may not be valid though, or it may still be an L or something, but we'll store it, sure. Let's just replace every everything in here, whole whole hog. Load file error will do get key. We'll just do that. Every int 16. We'll just change. Because, you know, what's, what's better than messing one thing up at a time? Messing everything up at a time. That's exactly right. Any more places. Call get key. All right, and that's it. So... Legal instruction, because I didn't put a call with it on one of these. Call get key, call that one. Those are all calls. That's a call. That's a call. Okay. Uh, can I do control L? There we go. There we go. Okay. This probably won't work still. Oh, no, that went through. Okay. I'll try to load file table. That loaded. That's good. Control R. Control R doesn't work. I'm not returning any sort of control things. That's true. So how am I handling that? Is it CTRLR or something? Yeah, CTRLR. And AX. Oh, that's, I'm um, expecting a scan code. Yeah, well, I don't have that. <laughs> uh, let's see, how much work would that be to implement? We get the scan code in AL initially. Yeah, we'll put it here, scan code. It'll be a byte. Current scan code, I will move that if it's valid. Move it into there. When we return, we'll move it into AH. Well, there we go. We'll try that. Editor goes to here. Let's load. Load that. So control R. Just returns an R, so I don't deal with control at all, which makes sense. I don't. Um, so we might have to make something else to return and save and all that. Probably on Wikipedia. Everything's on Wikipedia. The free online encyclopedia that anyone can edit. Surely they have it on there. This has one E as A, so that's what I've been using. So that is scan code one. XT, beautiful. Scan codes. PS2 keyboard. Not on PS2, it's on PS2 keyboard, because why would those be separate? Because it makes more sense. Um, set one, okay. Uh, one E, A pressed. Okay. So yeah, I'm using scan code set one, I guess, by default. That's fine. Let's search for left, control pressed. That says it's one D. Uh, go back. It says it's 1D, okay. Right before an A. Really? Right before the A? Oh, okay, I have a zero right here. So it'd be this. It'd be this one right here, the zero that I'm on. So this would be left control. So it's zero. We can set it to 1D. That's fine. That's a scan code. 
Scan code is 1D, that's fine. Let me do this. Compare AL1DH. Be left control make. I guess it's the make code. Left control make code. Probably have to do something different. Left shift, let's do uh, left control. It'd probably be easier doing this anyway. Left control. Left control key pressed, Y N. I don't know if I need scan code. Let's just get rid of that. We'll get rid of that. Don't worry about it. I guess I'll do what I did with the other ones. The left shift stuff. Which this is a lot of bad like jumps and everything, but oh well. I don't know what the break code is for it though. What is like 2A to AA? What is that? That's adding 2AA minus 2A is 80. Oh, so that's just adding 80 to it. Oh, so what is 1D plus 80? That would be the break code. That makes sense that they would do it that way. 9D, because the 1 plus 9, well, I'm, I'm not thinking tonight, am I? That is alright. 9D chess is what I'm trying to play right now. It's not working very well. Left shift break, left control. Oh, that'd be that. Yeah. So this will be similar stuff. Except this will be control. And this will be control. TRL. Okay. Character should be an AL. Let's move um, shift or control status to AH. Let's just, we'll just do that. I don't know what a good way to do this would be. Let's, I guess we'll try this. We'll move left shift to BX. So we're using BX anyway. I don't really know if I want to reset the shift status every time either. That's kind of annoying. Let's just change two things at once and hope they both break. All right, <laughs> get rid of that for now. I just want to do like compare. Now we'll just do this. It's more memory, but we'll just do this. Compare by left shift one. Um, if they are equal, so C move E to AX. Uh, BX. I'll just do that. And then we'll jump equal done. Ah, that's annoying. Zero, 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 001. We don't have to put an H. I'll put an A. It doesn't matter. It's the same. We'll just do that. Well, actually, I think there's an instruction just for one or zero. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't need this anymore. It's set, right? Set. Is there set equal? Set not equal? I didn't want to reload the page and do all that. Control F. Yeah, set not equal. So set with a condition, like set not equal, if the zero flag is not set. So if it's cleared, sets a byte to one. If it's true, sets the byte to zero otherwise. So set any AL, we'll set AL to one if the zero flag was cleared, or it'll set it to zero otherwise. So I think I can do that. So I can compare this. We'll do set equal AL. So AL will be one if left shift was pressed. Let's do AH, one for left shift. That's annoying though. I need a better way of, I have to signal to the caller of, of get key if left shift or left control was pressed. What's well, a good way of doing that? That would just set it to one, but I want more values than just zero or one. Okay, well, there's not, there's not an easy way to do this. So actually I'll keep that there. Let's go to shift pressed. I'll just do this. Shift pressed. Otherwise, let's compare left control to one. That is what I called these, right? Yeah. Oh, well, left control. Let's do. Let's do it like that. Okay. 
control pressed. So shift pressed. Let's move into AH. Something that signifies a shift key was pressed. I don't know. A one. <laughs> do it the enum way without ever using enums. Oh, we'll just do this. Okay. Control pressed. Move AH to. That's fine. And we'll leave that. We'll do that. Okay. So check if AH is one or two. Otherwise, let's set it to zero. X or AH. So that'll initialize it to zero. Initialize to zero for neither key pressed. Okay. I'll also copy this for control, just in case we want to put these in later, which we probably might. So H1, shift is pressed, two, control is pressed. Okay. Mm, undefined, yes. Because I just got rid of the done label. Because I'm a genius. That's why I check constantly if stuff works, because usually it doesn't work. Because why would it ever work? So CTRLR. Didn't press enter. There we go. So save scan code, I won't really be able to do that. So where, where all am I using save scan code? Oh, I am comparing it. Oh no. That's not good. I'm actually using it. <laughs> That's not good. I don't want to mess with BX too much, but we'll do this. I don't think I'm even messing with DS in here anyway. Am I even messing with DS? No. <laughs> Get rid of the DS. No, don't do that. That one. All right. Um. Okay. I'll tell you what, we'll move this into BH. BH instead. That's what we'll do. Let's be BH. Let's move scan code to AH. If we can, I got rid of the scan code thing. Well, we're going to put it back. Do you want to change that instead of printing out? No, return. Well, maybe I don't do this. BH would be one or two. BH would be two for control when it returns. AH wouldn't have the scan code, unfortunately. So that'd be all right. Uh, let's put this as a to do. I think I can do it. I just don't have the brain power right now. Find a way, forget key to return scan code in AH. Okay. So until that happens, BH equal two will equal control. So I can't do, um, oh yeah, yeah, we can just compare, compare to two. Control key pressed from and get key. Do this CTRLS. This is, I don't like having these jumps because it's, you know, terrible. It's not good code. Very terrible code, but that's all right. We'll do this. If control, oh, if control was not pressed, we can just go down here. Check nav keys. Check nav keys text. We'll just do that. So this, this jump not equal. Control key was not pressed. We'll go to there. About the dot. Okay. So if it was pressed, we'll compare AL to R. Or S. Okay. If it was pressed since neither of these, it'll go on anyway. Okay. 
that should maybe work as a little stop gap to stop all the bleeding <laughs> on this terrible stuff. Editor, okay. So let's load file table. It's there. So does control do? Yeah, does control R do anything? Control R. It returns, and it also prints first character. It's apparently somehow in QEMU reading an input byte from port 60 does not clear the keyboard buffer. And if it did, oh, my problems would be so much less, but that's okay. But okay, does control S work when we do that? It probably does, but this is not going to work for new files. This is going to be, this can be terrible. Other file. That's fine. That's fine. Test file one. Okay. Control S. Oh, enter file name. Test file one. Control R. I mean, it put it on there. Maybe that worked. I don't know. It kind of worked. It's jank. It's very jank. It kind of doesn't work well. I made the keyboard like behave very terribly this video. I apologize for that. I really do. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna have to work on the editor some more, obviously, because save scan code is not going to work for all these. So I'm gonna try to figure out a way to return a scan code from git key and put it in AH or otherwise have a different way of handling keys in here. All right, so I slipped on it, gave it a bit of thought and um, I don't need to mess with the interrupt vector table just yet. So marked what I did with new, right? Yeah, so I put new things here so that I didn't forget what I did. So that was helpful. Thank you, past self. Uh, commented out these two lines. For stuff in the editor, like the arrow keys, um, the in the home and end key that we're using to navigate around the text files, um, the scan codes are above 57. So limiting to 39 would exclude those unless I did some other logic. I didn't want to do that. So the easiest thing to do is just um, not care about these. So I'm going to delete those two lines now. Um, but I I did end up using the scan code variable here, so just moving a a l into there. So we're storing that by default every time. Um, the difference is that if I have a shift or control, it doesn't really matter. So if we do like control R, we'll get the scan code for control, which is like one D or whatever it was, and then we'll get the scan code for R. So really, I wasn't overriding it or anything. It was replacing the scan code every time. That's fine. I don't know why I had a conniption with that. I was just too tired, I guess. But that's fine, and, and it's simpler. Okay, so we're just moving whatever scan code we ended on back into AH. So if they did Control R, this would be R. Uh, well, the scan code for R. Uh, the character will still be in AL at this point. So the shifter control status, we're still doing this. Moving it into BH, left shift, or left control. So if left shift was pressed, I'm moving a one to BH. If left control was pressed, moving a two into BH. Okay, and then I made a done label. So that's why I put the new there. This is new, put a jump, jump to done, or else it would go through by default, and we don't want that if neither were pressed. So I have a little done, done label here. It returns to the caller there, um, and I'm resetting these at the end before we return. So I'm just setting them to zero. Left shift and left control, moving zero into there, okay. I forget if I showed all that before I skipped ahead to this part. So just showing this now. Um, those are the only changes I did in this file, I believe. But um, the other changes were in, oh yeah, I had them both open. Had them both open before. So the other changes were in the editor. I did new here as well, right? Yeah, so at the end, um, it ended up being another sector in length, pretty much. So <laughs> and it, ended, it ended up overriding 10 sectors. Now it's 11 sectors. So 56, 32 which means I did have to change it in the file table as well. Um, and the only other place was, we didn't have to change anything after all. So I was thinking about maybe making it since control was working, we could do like control was D and then Q and E for home and end. Um, but I'm not doing that. Instead of the arrow keys, we're, we can still use the arrow keys. So I don't need to worry about that. Don't need to worry about that. So editor's still good, but yes, I had to change the file table. So. The file size for editor is now B for 11. 
It was A for 10, now it's B for 11, okay. So what does that all look like? It means stuff should work. I pressed Alt, that's why there's a space there because I need Alt to move this in my window manager, CWM. Uh, but the editor, if I type it in right, it goes to it, it loads, it's all right. Since we keep retaking keys until we do a valid one. So if we load a thing like the file table, but I can't spell it, but it went through anyway, which is good. So the arrow key should work here. So I did left arrow, right arrow. See those work now. Up arrow, that's going up on the left. Down arrow. Uh, home and in probably won't work here. But I'll just go up to the top. So home won't do anything. End, okay, end works. And then home works, okay. So home and end and the arrow keys work. We can still put in, you know, characters here from get character. Can even put in caps. If we press shift every time, put caps. Okay. And you know the other characters were taken in. So special characters included. Okay, but everything still works in the text editor. I'm just showing that. And then control R and control S also work. So control R will return, control S will save. Same as before. Uh, backspace doesn't work, so that's great. Wanted to put test, that's all right. Control S, it saves test file. Again, backspace doesn't work. I really have to put backspace support into the editor, so, because it'll save special characters, but we can test if delete works, I guess. Backspace, backspace, oh. Okay, it doesn't. Yeah, you know what, whatever. <laughs> um, but I should have int 16 gotten rid of now. Yeah, so I don't see it anywhere. Hey, we'll check here. Recursively everywhere. We don't see it. So the next order business um, that I'm not doing right now, I got to research and uh, test it out, will be to, oh no, don't do standard in. Control C. Will be to replace int 13, which will be for file operations in the boot sector, in the kernel, print file table, and file ops, of course for file operations. So I want to be move I want to move to using the ATA ports for that. Um just thought this stuff up. Let's go uh ATA ports. Did I already have it in a tab? I guess I did. Or a bookmark. ATA read write sectors in 13. So we can read in what I've currently been doing is cylinder head addressing or cylinder head sector addressing mode. I might look to do LBA or logical block addressing. Um, you can do either, just if you want to translate between the two or not. But a basic, you know, this OS dev page has 64-bit code, but we can translate to 16-bit, I'm sure. Uh, using the ATA ports, which look to be, uh, what is DX here? 1F6. Okay, port to send head and drive numbers. You're sending the head number. Okay, and then you're sending a sector port count. Okay. Sector number port out in cylinder low, cylinder high. You got to write out to those ports as well. Okay, 1F7 is a command port. So 20 is a read with retry. So this is reading sectors. CHS read. Okay, makes sense. I don't know what FQ does. I think that's push flags and then quad for 64 bit. And then they're pushing registers. Okay, and then if there's an issue, then you keep reading. Uh, read a sector. Oh, this repeats in. Interesting. So I got to read. I got to read what this stuff does. I guess it puts it into memory and you read from that memory because he's reading from SI. Or no, they're reading in string word. That's interesting. I didn't know this was a thing. So I got to look at what that does. I guess you can read into your destination register as a string operation. That's cool. I'll look what that is. And there's LBA is logical block addressing which you can translate it, but it's better. It doesn't have some of the limitations that CHS has. But anyway, I'm gonna look into this. Sorry for the rambling. I just wanted to get int 16 working and it kind of works so far. There's still some quirks, of course, but I'm gonna work towards testing um, ATA ports out to replace int 13. And then anywhere else we have software interrupts called, we'll go from there. Once those are all gotten rid of, I will try to replace um, We'll not replace. I'll enhance our boot sector <laughs> to have a global descriptor table, and we'll go to 32-bit mode. 
I'll use Visa BIOS extensions after that to get a bigger screen. I'll have to fix printing after that is done. Mess with printing a lot more because we'll, do, we'll be doing pixels instead of text. And then, you know, we'll go from there. Probably fix stuff up, maybe rewrite stuff and see. We'll see. <laughs> um, quirks that are remaining at the moment uh, have to do with like returning from uh, from places and not getting proper values from Git from Git key. So if we call the calculator, you know, it starts with syntax error. So I'll either have to fix that inside the Git key function somehow, or I'll have to handle bad characters in the calculator when we first initially go to it. So this doesn't happen. And then when we return, we still get a character red, which is sort of garbage. So it just prints the arrow, whatever escape is, I guess, which I think is, I don't remember, but whatever escape is, it leaves an invalid character because QEMU doesn't clean up the data port somehow, even though you read from it. Um, but that's pretty much it. It's returning from something that uses a git key. It can leave stuff out there when we go back to the kernel, as you saw. Also, I think going to the, the editor and we, I press control R to return from editing a text file. So it leaves the R out and it puts the R first. So stuff like that. So I might look up um, or I might test some things out, see if I can fix that or not. If not, typing mostly works. So not a huge big of a deal, but small quirks like that. And then I'll uh, research and test the ATA ports. And if I get something going, I'll make a video over replacing N13. Hopefully it won't take too long. I've been busy at the end of the year, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. Uh, working more on this stuff makes me feel better. So I like working on it. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. I do appreciate it. Hopefully this episode wasn't too bad. I was bumbling about a lot. We got int 16 H replaced, albeit pretty poorly, but it is replaced. So that's something, right? Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Um, next time, I'll try to replace in 13H, and we'll see how badly that goes as well. But yeah, uh, I'll see you on the next one.